Hey everyone, welcome back again to another review. Please come on in, make sure you like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Please and thank you very much. Now, I already told y'all, you guys, on my other videos that I was running behind on my videos. If y'all only knew what kind of crazy tight schedule I have been having this um, past few weeks, you would understand. But anyway, I'm slowly knocking them out the way. Uh, we are still one show behind on Queen Sugar, but I'm going to review today Queen Sugar Season 6, Episode 5. And then I'll do episode six later on today. But um, this episode was titled Moving So Easily Through That Common Death. And I hope you guys got a chance to watch it. Hopefully you guys are probably more caught up than I am. But for those of you who have not seen it yet, it will be a lot of spoilers in this review. But again, come on in. Please like and share the video. Thank you so, so, so very much. Now, we are going to start off um, at the beginning of the show. The judge, um, Nova had told him, you know, upheld to stay for the order to excavate the land of the border loans so they cannot continue digging, at least for right now. Also, it might be a while before they can find out the forensic test results of those bones that were found on the land. The bad news was that the families of the missing men who were presumably killed by their father might want to file a civil suit. And even if those bones, you know, are proven to be the bones of the miss are not to be uh the bones of the missing men or are to be the bones of the missing men, they most likely still won't have a chance in hell of winning. Still yet, the idea of their father being dragged through the mud as a murderer understandably didn't sit too well with the border loans as of course we can understand now as far as um hollywood and vi and celine and gabe um hollywood has really taken a liking to celine's son gabriel they have been spending a lot of time together you know playing basketball going fishing and such and likewise gabe can't get enough of hollywood as well but will this newfound bond between hollywood and gabe possibly create a desire for hollywood to want to have his own children? I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think because on Vibe, she was showing signs of concern that Hollywood might want to one day have his own family. You know, somebody to hand down his legacy to. And what she had actually told him was you know, we're always going to have kids in our lives, you know, like Micah, Blue, and the new baby. And I wouldn't be surprised if Nova winds up having kids at some point, but it can never be ours. That is what Unvi said to her, to him. And then he responded with, Lexi is about more than just kids. And then he got up and slowly walked away. So, I, I, I couldn't tell from this scene if he was thinking or considering of, you know, possibly being a father himself to his own child. But anywho, over dinner, Celine gave um, Vi a bit of good news, which was um something that um, Vi could really use right about now. The lawyers um, Vi recommended to Celine had started on the paperwork for Celine's divorce. And Celine could not be any happier. She and her son are still safe, at least for now, from her husband. Um, Vi in Hollywood has been so accommodating and hospitable to her little family. And finally, she is starting the process of her divorce, you know, from her husband. So everything right now seems to be going as planned. But somehow, I think that that husband, who we haven't even met yet, will be trying to throw a wrench into Celine's plans real soon. I just have a feeling he's about to come out of, come out of somewhere, come out of nowhere and cause some issues. But as far as the... Um, as far as the uh, relationship between Prosper and his daughter, Billy, Prosper and his daughter, Billy, seems to be having some sort of communication issues. Billy, you know, she's not able to stay in St. Joe forever. She's one day going to have to return to Chicago to her own family, even though he's her family too, but you know what I mean. Um, but while she's there, she's only trying to make sure her father is comfortable and has everything that he needs before she returns to Chicago. And she actually tried to give him a new coffee bot because Prosper loves him some good old coffee. He refused the gift though. You know, he refused it and he, she spent like a hundred dollars for it. And even though it wasn't his money being spent, he just couldn't imagine accepting something that expensive, even if it was coming from his daughter. Now, had that been my mama, 
no matter how we grew up, you know, all poor um, and low on funds most of my childhood. Shoot, my mom would have accepted that coffee pot. I don't know what I'm going to do with this $100 thing or how I'm going to learn to use it, but because a $100 coffee pot, <laughs> I'm sure it's far more complicated than one of those $9.99 ones from Walmart that you can get real cheap, or should I say from the dollar store? But anyway, anyway. It wasn't his money being spent, so why couldn't he accept the gift from his own daughter? You know, his daughter, Billy, didn't understand. She did take back the pot, though, said she would return it back to the stove. Then after telling her father that she's just trying to make him happy, she leaves to visit Fiona. Now, during this, also, during this episode, we also found out that... Uh, Recently, Prosper had upset Aunt Vi by taking Billy's side on an argument. And it appears that Prosper, when talking to the fellas, you know, at the real spot, really wants to work things out with his daughter. What he told the fellas was, yeah, ever since she's been back, it's just been so hard connecting with her. One minute is good. The next minute is bad. The minute after that is even worse. That's what Prosper told the guys. However, much later you saw Prosper and Billy they will share a beautiful moment together. Prosper apologized to his daughter for all the times he might have failed her. In return, Billy also apologized to him for, you know, maybe embarrassing him back then because of that rumor that was going down uh, with Jimmy Dale, you know, claiming he had slept with her when he really didn't. He tried to take it from her and she managed to get away. But, you know, as we can recall, you know, Jimmy Dale, he told that lie because his feelings was bent out of shape when he uh, wasn't able to take it from her. So he still wanted her to look bad. But anyway, um, as far as Nova and Billy's relationship, that is slowly also being repaired as well. Nova, she's been waiting a very long time to hear an apology from Billy which she finally, finally received. And both of those ladies, they both, you know, been apologizing to each other, trying to understand each other, trying to uh, put their friendship back to the place that it used to be a long time ago because they really used to be some besties. They were really good buddies back then. So, um, as I said before, I hope they, you know, get back on track all the way for their relationship as well. Um, I want to get on another topic here. Let's move along to... Darla and that sexy Ralph Angel. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Darla, okay. Darla right now. She's, you know, she's pregnant. She's big as a house. She's terrified of being in despair, you know, with them uh, not having enough money coming in. They got the baby on the way. They neck deep in paycheck advance loans. And last week, Ron's friend, Theo, you know, the one from prison, he offered Raw a side hustle gig, which Raw had turned down at that time because the job was stealing computer office equipment from one of the Landry warehouses, a family that they have been feuding with back and forth for years. So he was like, uh uh, I don't want no parts, bro. I don't want no parts. But this week, he tells Darla that his boy Theo offered him a job. And Darla, she was obviously concerned, you know, responding, saying, Theo from prison? Ralph Angel, being from prison himself, he said, I used to be Ralph Angel from prison. Don't forget. Look, Theo is le legit right now. The gig might not be glamorous, but it would lead to a full-time job as well as warehouse work. And it's under the table, but it's good money. Darla should have seen right through that. Should have seen right through that. Like, first of all, Theo is legit right now. The gig ain't glamorous, but it could lead to a full-time job. And it's under the table. He's getting paid under the table. She should have saw right through that. So, yeah, she's concerned. And then it was like, Ralph Angel, I, I'm, I was like, are you seriously Going to jeopardize your family, your freedom, messing around with your boy, as you call him. He even told Darla that the job was legit again. Darla, she was like, I don't know. 
I'm not too sure about this. So she took it upon herself to confide her financial troubles to Aunt Vi. She went behind her husband's back, knowing he wouldn't be too happy about that. But come to find out, the money that Ra had told Darla not to get from her parents, you know, that college fund money that had been satisfied that she never used, she actually asked them to sign it over to her anyway, and they gave it to her. So she does have some cushion right now to be able to pay some bills, but she hasn't told him. And he really ain't told her the truth behind that side gig. But she has been feeling horrible, you know, for keeping that secret from Raw. And that's why she had to have somebody to confide in. So she went to Ralph Angel. I mean, went to Unvibe. Ralph Angel, he later met up with Theo um, to confirm the job entails. And I thought that at that time he might back out. Theo told him there was no risk involved. I'm like, how are you going to tell this man there's no risk involved? You stealing from the Landry's some computer equipment. I mean, how, how many risks can you possibly think of? I can think about five myself. <laughs> But how could that be true, Theo, when you you literally stealing again from the Landry's, especially when the border loans are already dealing with the authorities all over their property, trying to dig their property up, looking for some dead bodies that they think their father um, them put in the dirt years ago. You know, those two guys who came up missing, they still looking for their bodies, and they assume that their father kills them. So, like, Ralph Angel needs anything else on his shoulders right now? But Ralph Angel, he took that money from Theo anyway, sat in that truck crying and praying to God. I was like, child, oh, Lord Jesus. What he said was, God, I don't come to you often. You remember the last time I've been to church and opened up a Bible? I'm bad for that. I know what I'm doing tonight is wrong. This is for the right reasons now. I know it's wrong. I probably shouldn't ask you this, but please keep me safe tonight. I promise from here on out, I'm going to do right. I'm going to be the type of man my family could be proud of. That's my word. Amen. That's what Ralph Angel told the Lord above. But was it really a last minute change of plans per Theo? Or was the plan all along to get Ralph Angel to help load some trucks? I feel a snake. And I don't think he's really, truly his friend to be even trying to put him in a situation when he knows he has a child on the way. He knows Ralph Angel ain't trying to go back to the pen, and he really ain't trying to commit no crimes, even if it does mean between him being evicted from his property or not. Now, as far as this plan goes, uh, the plan originally was some other guy was supposed to help load the truck. I think Ra was just supposed to drive away or be the lookout guy or something like that. But now they needed Ra to actually help load the trucks. And then I thought, you know, he might back out of it then. Theo even gave him one last chance to not participate. But apprehensive, somewhat paranoid, Ra, he stayed, he stole, and he got paid from Theo. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, when those police sirens came out of nowhere... I know Ra almost pissed his pants thinking that they were coming from him. He got lucky that time. The lights came, woo, 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 but they ended up driving right past him to another crime scene or, you know, something. But yeah, so he got lucky this time. But will he get lucky next time? Now, he claims that this is the, the first and last job that he's going to do with Theo. That's what he told him. But I don't know. I don't know, sometimes people can't turn down that easy money, especially when they think it's just too easy of a job. But as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as Charlie and her son, Micah, please let me know what y'all think about their storyline now. Uh, Micah, he finally had a conversation with his mother in regards to his anxiety around police. I'm glad he's decided to reveal to her his experiences. You know, he's been having lately every time he sees a police officer. He also mentioned that he now understands that even if he can't control everything that happens to him, he can control how well he responds to certain situations, which is really, really important in the Black community that we live in right now, because with all these police brutality cases, we really have to make sure our young uh, men and women know how to act or respond 
to the police when they are around them. And that and taking up, you know, advice of his classmate Isaiah to start meditating has Micah looking at things a lot differently these days. But I think the tables might be turning with Micah giving Isaiah advice because as you saw in this episode, Isaiah was a little stressed out. He's not doing so well on his homework. And so Micah, you know, he switched the tables around, gave him an ear, told him if you ever need to talk, I'm always here. Then, you know, they suggested that they go for tacos. But before they left, before they left, when sharing a friendly hug with Isaiah, two other students, did you see them on the side, those two other students who noticed them embracing? And did you catch the expression on their face? Did you? Now, I say that to say, remember when I said a few episodes ago that I think something is up with this Isaiah. I also said I'm going to keep my thoughts to myself at that time. But today, I'm going to say what I've been thinking of Isaiah all along. Is he gay? Not that it makes a difference to me. You know, it doesn't. But that's what I've been um, wondering since I first saw his character. Those other two students were staring at Micah and Isaiah hugging, and they were looking like, I mean, they just had this weird expression, this weird look on their face like they might have known something that we don't know. So um, y'all let me know. Are y'all thinking or have been thinking what I've been thinking or do you think it's something else? Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Let's talk about Charlie and David. Uh, let's see. Their relationship is, uh, you know, doing okay, but Black Twitter has now made them famous, or should I say infamous per Charlie. And she hasn't been enjoying the publicity, especially the bad publicity that they have been receiving. So Charlie looks to Envi for some, you know, motherly type of advice. And Charlie, you know, at first she thought it was a great idea. And Envi even told her, you the one who put the shit on the internet. <laughs> but yeah, Charlie at first thought it was a good idea to post a pic of her and Davis on social media. Then she went on Gail King and told Gail that she and Davis are happily back together. And I basically told her, you know, to stop giving social media all the rights to your business. And even though I'm not all in with the thought of Charlie being back with her ex, and I just said that several times. Y'all need to tell me, what do you think of their rekindled relationship? <sighs> I don't know. He he just put her through so much, you know, in the past, and put her, her their son um, through so much, you know, from the things that he done to them, embarrassing them publicly, cheating, you know, that's the scandal, the sexual assault scandal, you know, with his basketball team, and and then having another kid. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I just say Charlie. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open at all times. But that's all I got on this episode, y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode, what y'all think about the different storylines. Again, please make sure you like and share the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And again, I am one show behind on The Queen Sugar, so I am going to do uh, episode six. If not tonight, I'll do it tomorrow um, around noon. And then I'm going to go and do uh, our kind of piece. People. And then the next day, probably Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll do my review on BMF, Black Mafia Family. So we get caught up. We get caught up, y'all. So thanks for hanging there, hanging in there with me. And thanks for participating in my shows and your feedback and everything. I really, really, really appreciate everybody's support. And on that note, stay safe, be blessed, remain vigilant at all times. And remember to take care of someone else as well as taking care of yourself. I'm out. Deuces. Bye.